In this video, we're going to be talking about the Bosch 16 sear IDS light system that is on the market now. We're going to be doing an in-depth review. We're going to cover some of the COP ratings, and we're even going to do a deep dive into the manual and the charts, and I'm going to show you how to break down these COP ratings and calculate it. We'll get pretty technical and explain to you why this is such a revolutionary system, why it's different from its counterparts, and we're going to talk about some of the things we like about it, some of the things we don't like about it, and food for thought that you should consider if you're in the market for a new system. System, and this is happens to be one of the systems that you are currently considering. But before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you're not already subscribed or consider subscribing, it takes a lot of time and energy to put out content like this and subscribing is a free way that you can show your support. And also for the algorithm, if you could smash that like button, it is much appreciated. Again, it's a free way that you can show your support and it helps out the channel tremendously if you find this content helpful. So let's talk about the system that we're reviewing today. We're reviewing the IDS light system, which is Bosch's 16 sear inverter driven heat pump. Now, the reason I like this system is number one, it's an inverter. Number two, it's a lower efficiency. So it's kind of a mid range product. And the reason I like that aspect of it is oftentimes in order to get an inverter driven system, they are a lot more expensive or they are a, a higher considered a higher end system. This particular system comes in at a price point that makes it extremely affordable and cost effective for people that are looking for a basic inverter driven heat pump and want to benefit from it, but maybe don't want to opt for a 20 plus sear efficiency heat pump system. This is just an absolute great bang for your buck system where you can go electric, you can get a heat pump, you can get increased efficiency, you can get all the benefits of an inverter, which if you're not familiar with the difference between a traditional single stage system with an inverter system, the inverter is always going to be number one, quieter, and number two, more comfortable. And the reason it's more comfortable is being quieter makes it more comfortable when it first kicks on you don't get a big you know gush of air now that's true if it's paired with an air handler that's kind of set up for that system but the bottom line is the system actually ramps up along a continuum now this particular system has an operating ratio where it can run from 33 percent capacity up to about 110 percent capacity and so what that means is that when it first kicks on it's operating at a third of its capacity and then it can increase its operating capacity in one percent increments all the way up to a hundred percent or 110 percent capacity and that's going to vary depending on outdoor ambient temperatures because all systems actually derate at extremely high outdoor ambient temperatures so once it gets above 115 120 things start to derate and same thing for low ambient temperatures when you're talking about heating order for something to qualify as a cold climate heat pump and asked to have basically a cop rating of 1.75 at five degrees Fahrenheit. And this system actually has that, or at least it qualifies for that. Because when we dive into the COP charts a little bit later, you'll see that the COP ratings are kind of all over the board depending and fluctuate a lot depending on the airflow of the indoor unit, as well as the indoor temperatures or the indoor set point, as well as the in conjunction with the outdoor ambient temperatures. So those are all things that you want to consider. But the bottom line is that this system, because it qualifies as a cold climate heat pump, it therefore qualifies for that $2,000 federal heat pump tax credit, which when you combine that with the already low price that this system comes in, it's a very budget friendly option for a lot of people. Now, it will not qualify for rebates in Excel territory for their cold climate heat pumps because the EER ratings are not high enough. Uh, we talk about that in another video uh, when we discuss the 20 SEER system. So I'll make sure I link that at the end of this video for you to review if you haven't checked that out already. But the bottom line is this is a great bang for your buck. The system is also a non-communicating system, which for an inverter is kind of of unique. This is true for the entire Bosch product line, but a lot of inverters like the Daikin Fit, for example, are communicating. And what this means is they require their own special thermostat. The downside to that is that when you have a, you know, a proprietary thermostat, let's say you wanted to use a Nest or an Ecobee or your own, you know, basic, let's say on off, you know, single stage type of thermostat, you couldn't do that with a Daikin Fit or a lot of the other inverter products on the market from all the other manufacturers, whether you're talking about Carrier or Lennox or any other manufacturer on the market because communicating products, they achieve higher efficiency through that communication. But one of the downsides is you have to use that specific thermostat because it's essentially a computer that communicates with the outdoor system. With the Bosch system, because you, it's non-communicating, the benefit is that you actually get a variety of thermostats to choose from. So if you want a Nest, you can have it. If you want an Ecobee thermostat, you can have it. Whatever thermostat you want, you can basically use it on the system. And so that makes it very unique and that it can be paired with a lot of systems Systems, but you're not having to sacrifice efficiency in order to do so. Now, there's also going to be other rebates that the system qualifies for. 
it's going to vary widely by your region. But if you go to the Bosch website, which again, I'll make sure to link in the description, there's going to be a link to that Bosch website. And it'll tell you, you can plug in your zip code or your area, it'll tell you what other rebates may be available and may qualify for. So keep that in mind when you're looking up the other rebates, because you know, if you're in Texas, or you're in another market that we don't mention in this video, it just means that it doesn't mean that it doesn't qualify for a rebate it just means we can't keep track of all the rebates in your area. So just check and see if it qualifies because this does qualify for a lot of rebates in a lot of metropolitan areas. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the actual numbers. I'm going to grab my laptop and bust it out for you guys right now. And we're going to show you a screen recording of some of the comparisons between the manuals of the 15 seer or the 16 seer Bosch system, as well as the Dyke and Fit. So you can see how the COP systems compare and we'll actually break down what the different efficiency is and I'll give you my two cents on how this thing actually performs. All right, so I've got the uh, manuals pulled up and tabbed between the Dyke and Fit as well as the uh, 15 SEER system. And so I'm going to show you what the actual COP ratings are between the 16 SEER inverter system. This is the IDS light inverter ducted split heat pump. And then we're going to be comparing that to the COP ratings of the Dyke and Fit at varying temperatures. And I'm going to show you what all this, I know this just looks like a bunch of random numbers. So I'll explain how you use that to calculate COP and explain that. And I found it, to be quite honest, I found it a little confusing at first because when I was looking for specifically a COP rating, but the way that they give it to you is based on, because there's some variables between the air handler consumption and what the airflow is, there's actually a lot of different COPs. If the airflow is higher, for example, you know, the motor is going to be, the blower motor is going to be pulling more power than it would, you know, if the uh, blower was in a lower stage speed. So it, it gives you a lot of COP data. So that being said, let's dive in. Now I did some pre-calculations ahead here just because I didn't want to just show you this chart without, you know, being prepared to show you what the actual numbers are. And what I did was I actually, so just to give you an apples to apples comparison on the system, because in some of the other videos we have on the channel, we'll be talking about both the 18 SEER. This is the 15 SEER. We'll talk about the 18 SEER, and then we'll also be talking about the 20 SEER right here. But just to do apples to apples, we're doing it on the two ton model and same thing for the Dyke and Fit Enhanced and um, we're doing it same thing. This is the two ton model for the Enhanced so that it's a like for like comparison and you know we're comparing apples to apples. So the first thing you look at here, so on the side here where it says 760, this is our airflow and CFM that stands for cubic feet per minute. This is indoor temperature if I'm reading this correctly. Like I said, I had to stare at this chart for a little bit to make sure I was reading things correctly because as you'll see when we get to the Dyke and chart, it's a little bit different. But basically this is our indoor temperature. So so this is our set point, right? If we're setting the temperature at 70 degrees for heating at 70 degrees, this is going to be our kilowatts used. And this is going to be our TC stands for, I believe it was total capacity. That's right. And so, and this is in BTUs, right? So, or thousands of BTUs. So basically, for example, just to give you like a little background in HVAC, where this says 2.4, because we're talking about a two ton system, there's 12,000 BTUs in a ton. So when someone says they have a five, ton system that's actually 60,000 BTUs of cooling capacity and that's on a per hour basis so that means BTUs per hour so the reason I'm doing this is just to keep things kind of neck and neck so we're assuming 70 degrees set point inside and then the temperatures that we're measuring this at this is actually our outdoor air temperature it goes from 86 which I don't know anyone who's heating their house when it's 86 degrees outside but down to 47 all the way down to 5 the reason 5 is an important temperature is because 5 is the temperature at which a cold climate heat pump receives that kind of classification for the purposes of the federal tax credit, the heat pump tax credit. And so that's what I based the two readings on to give you a side-by-side -side comparison. Today, we're going to be look at 47 for heating capacity and COPs. And we're also going to be looking at five degrees Fahrenheit for COPs. So that's going to show you that cold climate performance on those cold nights. And as you'll see, the COP changes a lot. So when we go over here and we go to this column where it's, you know, says 47, and we go down here to where we have our indoor set point at 70 uh, degrees, 21.68. That means the capacity of the output is 21.68 or 21,700 uh, BTUs. We have to convert BTUs to watts in order to do that. We, and you'll just take my word for it, but we multiply that by 0.293. The reason we do that, and I've explained it in other videos, but I'll just explain it really quickly here, is because there's actually 3.412 BTUs in one watt of energy. And so when you take one watt and you divide it by 3.412, that means that basically one BTU is point 
0.293 watts. So to convert this number to watts, we multiply this 21.68 times 0.293, then we take that number and divide that by 2.14, and then that gives us our COP, which at 47 degrees Fahrenheit, our COP is 2.96. Now that's the COP for this at 47 degrees. This is the 15 sear inverter. Now, if we look at the Daikin Fit Enhanced, you can see that at 47 degrees, it is a little bit higher, right? It's a 3.4 is the COP rating for the Daikin Fit. Now, keep in mind, Daikin Fit is a 17, 18 sear system. So it's a, it's a little bit higher efficiency anyways. This system is you know supposed to be an entry level inverter. So I'm not surprised that the Daikin Fit outperforms it there, but that's still to show you, this is pretty good that it keeps up at, at that temperature, which is not that cold. But most moderate climates, hey, this is a no-brainer. This is a great system that's going to keep up and stay pretty efficient. But what, how does it do on cold temperatures, right? So if we go down here and we do the same formula, as you can see, capacity dropped substantially. We were just at, you know, 21,000 BTUs. Now we're at, because this is actually in thousands of BTUs, we're now at 15,000, you know, 940 BTUs per hour. Kilowatts consumed by, you know, the system is 2.35. And so this, when we take this 15.94, multiply that times 0.293 to, uh, again, convert so that we're talking apples to apples and we're getting to kilowatts. And then we divide that by 2.35, which is the energy used, that gives us a COP of 1.98. So 1.98 at five degrees for this system. And if we look at five degrees for the Daikin Fit, we are basically neck and neck, right? We're at two is or 2.0 for the COP at five degrees on the two ton. So as you can see, this is why I absolutely love this Bosch uh, 15 sear system, right? And like I said, I'm going to link this website to Bosch Home Comfort in the description for you, but it achieves up to 16 sear. It's technically classed as a 15 sear. Uh, it's an inverter. It's super quiet. Daikin fits technically a little bit quieter, but hey, it's also a higher end system. So you're going to expect that. And um, as you can see, you know, the cold climate performance was almost neck and neck with the Daikin fit. Daikin fit performs a little bit better at, you know, warmer temperatures. So that you know the COP is a little bit higher but once you get down into the cold temps it's actually they're basically neck and neck and so it's for this reason that I think that you know the Bosch system is a great bang for your buck 16 sear inverter I mean it's an amazing system you compare it with an air handler you compare it with a high efficiency furnace and I hope you enjoyed this content uh, let me know what you think about the review in terms of you know how we went through the breakdown did you find that the COP breakdown content helpful you know and post that in the comment and and as always, if you haven't subscribed already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel or consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and smash that like button for the algorithm. And if you happen to be in one of the areas we service like Denver, Colorado or Phoenix, Arizona, you can actually schedule an appointment with us for free. We come out for free for all first time customers, whether that's for a service call or annual maintenance, or if you're just looking for an estimate for system replacement. And there's actually a link in the description below where you can actually schedule online at your convenience, as well as an up-to-date list of the cities and states that we service so you can stay up to date when we start servicing your metro. So we hope you found this content helpful and if you did please make sure you smash that like button for the algorithm and consider subscribing. We put out daily and weekly content on how you can get the best HVAC for your home and as promised earlier there's a few videos popping up on the screen right now that talk about some of the other Bosch product lines so make sure you check those out if you haven't done so already and we'll catch you on the next episode.